Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. You've probably noticed that we've been doing a lot of reporting on electric aircraft and recently some stories on a new air race league called uh, Air Race E. With me is Jeff Zaltman, who is overseeing that effort. Jeff, you and I last talked about this exactly two years ago last month at Aero. At the time, uh, it was envisioned that uh, an air race event would happen in 2020. Uh, obviously, for pandemic reasons, it did not. Uh, so we've had that year plus uh, for some additional development and lots of changes uh, in the whole idea and some expansion of the idea. So where are we now in terms of the aircraft, the technology, and the first planned event? So we are in an exciting moment right now. Uh, we have, uh, as you mentioned, Paul, we, uh, we, we've spoken for a couple of years and there have been a lot of plans, uh, very well laid plans uh, in place. Uh, COVID did interrupt that. There's no doubt about that. Um, there was uh, a lot of uh, hurdles that we've had to overcome because of that, just as the rest of the world. Uh, at the same, by the same token, we actually were able to make a lot of advances and organize ourselves in a, in a much better way. So there have been a lot of positives that have come out of that time period as well. Um, what it's done is, is put us in a, in a perfect position at the moment. So right now, we're very well positioned to go forward. Um, we're, we're really hitting the ground running now with uh, in terms of getting the teams ready, in terms of host cities, in terms of technology partners getting on board. Uh, and, and all the different uh, sort of fronts that we're working on um, are really coming together nicely right now. So, so we feel like we're, we're in a very, very excellent position right now to be, uh, to be developing air racing, uh, electric air racing. So uh, where that brings us to is um, we had originally, when we started out, had hoped to get our first race in 2020. Obviously, as you said, COVID put that on hold. Um, it was just obviously impossible to do that. Uh, what it also did was, um, and to be honest, I actually thought it might even help some of the teams develop the aircraft because uh, they'd have perhaps more time or perhaps uh, an ability to refocus on some of these things. And, and in fact, that did happen. But what also happened was the supply chain was interrupted. So, you know, manufacturers and suppliers couldn't deliver the parts and the components and uh, the materials for the batteries, et cetera. So, that, there was a challenging position there, but that's all behind us now. Everything's really moving forward. So, as I said, going forward, uh, we're going to be racing next year. So, uh, 2022 is going to be the first ever electric airplane race, and that's going to be an absolutely historic moment. We've got a lot to do to get there. We've got a lot of things that have to come into place uh, and fall into place really, really well uh, by that time, but we're absolutely confident we can do that. Um, so, so, it's going to be an exciting and busy year ahead of us. Do you have a venue for the first race? So we've actually gone through a hosting host bidding process uh, over the past several months. And we started with perhaps over a hundred, maybe more, more than a hundred cities uh, that were interested, that expressed their interest, formally expressed their interest to, to be the host. Um, and that's an amazing pool of, uh, of, of opportunities. Um, We've gone down to a short list. So it's, it's, I mean, this is a thrilling moment. We've got a short list of cities that want to host that, uh, that first ever electric air race uh, next year. And we're going through negotiations, trying to figure out, of course, there's a lot of implications in terms of dates, what's the best time, Maybe there's climates, different, uh, you know, different summer periods and things like that. So we're going through a lot of different analysis right now with those cities and trying to find out the best, uh, the best place for it. Uh, that should be done hopefully in the next month or two. Um, so long story short, it'll be later this year, kind of Q3 next year, where we're going to announce where we're going to be racing in most certainly Q3 next year. So these, uh, this race and, and these airplanes are based on the Formula One idea. But since we last talked, there's been an expansion there. It seems like you have an additional two classes. You have a vertical class and you have a performance class. So explain how those classes work and uh, uh, what these airplanes are based on or what they're like. Yeah, so we started with the open class, as you said. So the open class is the, is the kind of uh, 
it's, it's really the, it's what we formed ARC around. So that's meant to be, as it says on the label, you know, it's open. It's meant to be completely open for all manufacturers, all teams, uh, you know, anyone should be able to find a place in there to configure the powertrain how you see fit. Of course, there's still formula rules. There's rules, there's criteria, minimums, maximums, and, and there's a set of, uh, you know, formulae but you have to build to that formula, but you can do it however you want. So you can sort of connect the dots how, however you see fit and the, and the planes will come out very uh, differently uh, and the powertrains even. That's the open class. Now, uh, as you mentioned, Paul, we have added two more classes uh, to address sort of two other different areas, which are very exciting. It's been very well received by the industry. Uh, one of them is the performance class. And so this is a little bit uh, different um, paradigm, but within the same formula. So the rules are going to be almost identical to the open class. However, the powertrain is going to be simplified and standardized, at least from a starting point. So we've got a much, much, much finer uh, window of, uh, you know, of parameters and, and characteristics for this powertrain. And in fact, we're also just about to complete uh, a tender process within the industry uh, where we've identified a number of manufacturers, both in aerospace and in automotive, that are uh, capable and, and wanting to build this powertrain, and we're going to be selecting someone soon. So we're going to be found, founding it based on a standard powertrain. Now, the interesting thing there is that we, we don't want to make it just a test of the pilots. We've got other races like Air Race One and Formula One Air Racing and those types of things that we can put the pilots to the test and enthuse fans. We always want to be doing something in Air Race E that's also relevant, meaningful, and important to the industry, to the acceleration of the technology, to the development of electrification in aerospace. So even though it's going to be a standard powertrain, we're actually going to be uh, allowing some modification of it, um, but it's really going to be about the things around it, like how do the teams evolve the cooling systems uh, and how, you know, how does the operation, how do they, the little modifications, little changes, and, and the usage of it, how does that change the performance and the optimization of the same powertrain uh, and that's that's going to be really interesting and actually even some of the really large manufacturers in aerospace have, have said that that's actually a, a really fascinating area it's just how do you get that little bit more performance um, out of something similar by using it differently um, that, so that's one thing and then of course we've got the really exciting and, and quite trendy if I'll say uh, EV tall class the vertical class so you know we're positioning it as the, the first ever vertical motorsport and that's really exciting. Um, we're working with industry partners there. The concept there is also a little bit different in, the, in terms of the aircraft is that we're not going to be building those ourselves. We're going to, uh, nor are we instructing anyone to build them. We're going to the market on pre-existing platforms. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, as you know, there's a, a vast array of exciting projects out there. And we wanna bring them into an environment where they can be tested in a different way. Um, and we're going to be putting them through uh, sort of a competition format, but really it's also more of a showcase. We want to be able to allow each of them to show their own benefits, their own uh, qualities and, and how, and the characteristics and what makes them different, what makes them special. So it's not just one winner and, you know, seven losers. It's going to be, how do we really shine a spotlight on eVTOLs? And, and that's really actually kind of with an, another ulterior motive of let's create awareness and in the marketplace to get people to want to adopt the usage of EV tolls because they're going to be entering the market very soon. And how are we going to get people to use these? You know, how are we going to get them to want to be passengers? So we're trying to create an engaged, uh, an engaged kind of uh, relationship between initially fans, but eventually uh, passengers uh, with EV tolls. And that's the kind of the goal there. Now, uh, when we say EV, EV tall here, we're not talking about small drones. We're talking about uh, large <clears throat> multi-rotors. Correct, correct. So, well, some of them can be quite quite small, but these are manned. So manned, and we are considering autonomous. What we won't do is get into the drone area. Um, pretty much, it, well, literally every, everyone else that's in this space um, is is working in the drone segment. And there's there's been drone races for, for many, many years. And they're exciting. They're super. They're fantastic. I mean, drones are also an extremely pioneering area in aerospace. But those are remote controlled uh, vehicles. And we're looking at, um, you know, something that can actually be manned. Uh, like I said, we are considering autonomous. That's going to be a, a slightly different segment. Um, but, but these are large, large size vehicles, correct? 
So last time we talked, uh, the the Formula One aircraft uh, for, for the electric <clears throat> were going to be uh, significantly more powerful than the gasoline versions of these things. Is that still the plan? And if that is the plan, what's this race going to be like? Yeah, so, so with the open class, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, with the open class, it's very much that. That's the case. Um, in, a, in a Formula One air race, uh, the, we use a Continental 0200 uh, engine, and that, that's the combustion engine, and that's 100 horsepower. You can do modifications, change the propeller, do things to it to get it to 150, 60, 70, perhaps more horsepower. Um, with uh, Aris E, the open class, we're starting at 150 kilowatt power limitation with a boost of up to 175. So that puts you at way over 200 horsepower. So there, this and we're and these are on. I should uh, highlight these are on actually the same airframe. So so we're using we're able to retrofit the racers from Formula One in some cases. Um, so that should actually give a lot more power. The flip side is that there's a lot more battery to be able to do that. So there's the, there's a weight issue there. So that that trade off will be interesting to see how that plays out. The horsepower will be be, be there, but it'll, they'll be heavier. Uh, with the performance class, um, these are going to be lighter. We're limiting it at 100 kilowatt power, and there's not going to be a boost function. They're much simpler, much more straightforward. Again, it's more about the ancillary subsystems that is going to be interesting. Um, so those potentially, be honest with you, I, I, th I thought they would be slower, but what the calculations are coming out is that they could be, because of the weight, uh, e performing equally well as, as, as both the open class and Formula One air racing in the combustion class. So, I mean, all of these things are really things we're exploring. Uh, you know, we've asked top world-class engineers from universities, aircraft manufacturers, uh, different skunk works around the world. And, and, and still they all come out with slightly different calculations. Uh, they can agree on a lot of things, um, but there's a lot of different nuances in, in the way they design and put together these systems. So, uh, so it's gonna be exciting. I mean, it's, it's not just gonna be an exciting race, it's also, you know, an, an exciting exploration of the technology. How long do you think one of these races would typically last? So uh, it's going to last, it's four laps. Uh, each lap is five kilometers, so 20 kilometer race. Uh, it's going to be about roughly one minute per lap. So four, call it five minutes a race, uh, really short and punchy. But uh, what's, what's also exciting is that we're going to be racing again that day. So there's going to be there's we get eight eight race planes into a into a single race. Uh, if we are able to achieve sixteen teams eventually, which is the goal, you can also have two races and each will race twice. So you have multiple races in a day heat races, um, and uh, yeah. So I mean it's uh, they're they're short, but there's also a lot of drama around it. You know before and after there's a lot of tension building up, and 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 when as the planes come in and taxi over to the crowd, uh, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know involved as well would you envision this to be a one-day event we're planning we're planning a two-day event uh that's the same format we use for air race one uh which is our, co our conventional uh races um is, is a two-day format with heat races the first day then semifinals and finals the the second day uh, it does come down to the venue uh where we go there's some venues that want to make a five-day open public festival out of it. And then there's going to be a lot of activity and probably more burden or, you know, pressure on us to, to have more races, more activities, more planes, which is great. Um, and then others want to limit it down to one day, make it short and sweet. Um, you know, most, as we know, most, um, you know, most, most motorsports are really just a, you know, a couple of hours long uh, and they pick one day. Uh, we can spread it, spread that out. So we do that for the live audiences. But as we're becoming much more of a television product, we also want to keep it short and sweet and tight. So it, it may well, you know, tighten down to a one day event over the next uh, years, year or two. How many teams at the moment? We've got 17 teams that have registered as a race team uh, for the open class. Um, so, and, and probably about half of those are really developing really well um, and, and, and quite advanced. Um, we're actually going to be having our first ever electric race plane test flights in July. We've got several teams that are ready already in July to be getting these aircraft airborne. So those are advancing. On the performance class side, uh, we, ha we haven't actually gone out to formally sign up the teams. We've been receiving interest 
And we're waiting till we have the powertrain identified so we can tell them what they're getting into, because that's, of course, an obligation on them. Whereas the open class, that's up to them. They can they can go develop their powertrain. Uh, we don't get involved. But uh, but in performance class, we do. So we're waiting till we have that lined up. But we have a lot of interest. We're expecting eight teams. Uh, that's kind of our our goal there is to have eight teams in the performance class. OK. Uh, and of course, anyone can participate in this, really. Uh, anyone who wants to build an airplane. Uh, and, and we should give you a website here. It's uh, airracee.com, correct? That's right. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, you can go on the site and uh, find out more about the event. And if, I suppose if they're interested in entering or building the airplanes, they can contact you directly. Yeah, exactly. Get 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 in touch with us, us through the site or or me through LinkedIn and other places. Uh, we're we're absolutely uh, able to work. Um, you know, with the different teams, they come from all different angles. Some from universities, some from aircraft manufacturers, others from you know air maintenance shops and it really comes from all over and they're all missing one link or another and we help the form them. We have a team in house to help match them up with other team members to help match them up with the industry partners so that we're getting, they can get the right suppliers for whatever they need. And, uh, and we work very closely with them and we have monthly team meetings where we all get together and in between there, we have other meetings. So there's a lot of hand holding, Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, we're, the, it, it requires a real, professional uh, focus from the team. So you have to be prepared if you're gonna enter this. There's a lot of expectations. Um, it's not necessarily expensive compared to other motorsports. It's it's actually quite inexpensive compared to motorsports, but there's a cost and you have to be prepared for budgets and the technology and electrification is not, you know, it's not easy to, to manage. You have to know what you're doing. So a lot of expertise, a lot of expectation on the team, but it's absolutely open to anyone and, uh, and uh, it's it's literally anyone we're looking for, you know, we're, we're looking to, to pull people. We don't want to identify people or invite people. This is a, a, a platform for creation. So we're looking for new uh, uh, talents to come to us. OK, Jeff, well, we'll put it on the calendar uh, to contact you or we'll hear from you, I guess, in a month or two about where the venue is going to be and how this thing moves forward. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, Jeff Zaltman of Air Race E. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. Thanks for watching.